Top of the morning Top of the morning Back at it again with another one And today We're looking at the Nasdaq If you don't know now you know Please be sure to give us a follow on Twitter The handle is S-C-H-M-D-double-I S-C-H-M-D-double-I And let's get into it We're gonna be looking at the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock hour on Monday to see if price presented us with any opportunities that we could have taken advantage of and to just see how we could have benefited from it. Let's dive into it. So looking at the AM silver bullet, already we see we ran some liquidity. Just take a note of that, you know. Buy side liquidity. We ran some buy side. We are higher than our midnight open price. Right? Higher than our... Oh, no. Don't... Yeah, cool. Let me just mark that out. Higher than our midnight open price. Higher than the daily open. Right? Let's try to look for our 830 candle. There's our 830 candle. So, we are above our opening price. We are above our 8.30 opening price. That should give you confidence that price is probably going to be extremely bullish. I mean bearish. Also note how we ran that liquidity pool. Broke down. Broke short term lows. Right. See we had the strong close. And opened up that fair value gap over there. I'm just going to mark out the fair value gap. So we took out liquidity. Took out liquidity. Broke short term lows. Had a strong bearish close. Traded back up. I'm just going to put on a fib. Just to. Using the bodies of course. Interesting. So we came back up. Opened the fair value gap. Price Mohawks into the OTE zone. Before melting. To the downside. A movement if we just got the low that was a movement of about 270 no 225 points probably random some light i'm gonna remove this fib for now since it's making the chart a bit busy so you notice we cleared the liquidity broke down extremely bearishly strong close down cl broke short-term lows traded back up we were above our daily open and above our 8 30 open and then we began to proceed to the downside. One would then wonder how can you then target or know where price will most likely lead off to. You know, because there's like a lot of whatever. Probably one would have aimed for that low over there since there's like sell stops over there. But I'll show you a trick that I learned. Shout out to my mentor, ICT. I'm going to take this, put that at the high, project it down to here. You can see where we had the change in the state of delivery. So price was delivering bearishly and then changed to now deliver bullishly. So I'm going to place it there and I'm going to look at the standard deviation. And look how we got to the negative 4 level. Tapped into that and then began to reverse. This is how I, what I used to pro, um, project targets, if I can put it like that. Let me just show my FIB settings to everyone. Okay. These are my FIB settings. Just uh, pause the video, take it down, and then I'll continue. All right. For my TP1, it would be in the negative 2 to negative 2.5 zones. Would you look at that? It Price went down, tapped the negative 2, and then reversed. That negative 2 to negative 2.5, in my personal opinion, I find it to be a reversal zone. So that's a good place to take your first TP or first partial, if I could put it like that. If price is indeed still bearish or is still energetic enough to continue in the direction that you have predetermined, then your next best bet would be negative 4 slash negative 3.5. You can see here we hit negative 3.5. What happened? It went up. Do a stubble to this information. I'm going to remove this fib. So, 
liquidity struck broke below short term lows strong bullish close traded back up to a fair value gap we left in the displacement leg went short in ote pushed down used our standard deviation projections to give us a rough idea of where price would go to and the rest is history pretty beautiful movement um this trade cost us what or ch- gave us about two let's say 250 points not bad at all very beautiful and yeah man another day another dollar thank god for the skill <laughs>